To get started with the landing pages module, one of the easiest ways is to bring in a template and then adjust it. So we're going to go through that with a simple landing page now. Within your scenes compendiums in your compendiums folder, there is the BathewWiki landing pages scenes compendium. And within this, there are several different options. Currently in the month of April 2023, these are in the remastered section and these are our configurable landing pages. We also have some configurable versions in the new section. In the future, they will be under the folder for configurable landing pages. Basically, you're going to pick one of these that you think looks good and you're going to adapt from there. So I'm going to bring in this city gates simple here. And you probably want to change this, so, so I'm going to name this LP Demo. Something I would highly suggest doing is change the navigation to all players. You don't have to do this. This is completely optional. But if you want this to be something that your players can regularly go back to, then leave it navigable and for all players. That way, if they're on another scene like this blank one, they can click to move over to this page, even if it's not active. We're going to go ahead and activate this so it's our primary focus. And here you can see this is already set up with artwork, a background, some weather effects, and it has these pieces of intelligence. These work by clicking using Monk's Active Tile Triggers. However, when we click on them, they're not going to take us anywhere in specific right now. We're going to have to set that. So I'm using my Tile Tool and just double clicking on this invisible tile you can see here. And then if you go to the trigger section, this is all of the things from Monk's Active Tile Triggers that makes it work. The first tab is the Setup tab. We don't need to make any changes here. This is controlling what actually causes actions to occur. The Actions tab is where we have the actual mechanisms firing. We can see we have a few different landings here, and these are covering different behavior. The Hover In and Hover Out are what's governing when these little arrows light up. So you shouldn't have to change those. This run macro is what we're going to be editing. You'll see that the macro is coming directly from the nuts and bolts compendium. So you don't have to have any macros imported in order for this to work. It will work right out of the box. In order to change your destinations, we're going to click edit action. And you can see there's a lot of things here in this args field. Basically, this action is taking everything in the args field and sending it to this macro. And then the macro is processing it in different ways. We've got three sets of quotation marks here. The first is the name of the scene that we're going to travel to. So we don't have one in just yet, but I'm going to make it LP demo characters. And what this is going to do is when I trigger this, it's going to take me to the scene that has the same name as LP demo characters. So it's just that easy. If you have an existing scene that you want to switch it to, you can just use the configure option and you can copy and paste the scene name. Speaking of copy and pasting, I'm going to copy and paste this over into another document so I have that handy for later. The next two arguments depend on if you're using scene transitions. If you're not using scene transitions, you don't need to make any changes to them. This will still fire just fine to take you to the appropriate page. But if you are using scene transitions, you can edit the image that will display from the scene transition. And then you can edit the text message. You can check out our full tutorial on scene transitions with Monk's Active Tile Triggers to figure out how all of these pieces work together. But this is the basics. So if you want to change this rather generic quote, you can do so and you can change this background image. All of these initially have some sample images from the landing pages module itself. If you're wanting to grab a custom image, something that can be easy is just using the tile image or video link right here from a tile that you brought in, and then you can just copy and paste that into the quotation marks. And so just to demonstrate this, even though this blank isn't what we are going to be using later, I'm going to set the same name here as what I grabbed earlier, which is that um, LP demo characters name. Then when we click, it takes us to LP demo. Now you'll note that the 
macro is firing off of name. So if you have multiple scenes named the same that you're calling with the macro, for example, if we had five scenes with LP demo hyphen characters, it's going to randomly pick one so you won't have a repeatable result. Just keep that in mind when you're naming things, make sure that they are unique. And to that end, I'm going to change this back to blank so that we don't have any issues. For customizing the rest of these, just go back to your tile controls and repeat the process. Once again, we're going into triggers, actions, editing this run macro, and we're gonna change the name here. So I do have another scene here. I'm gonna copy LP demo map, paste that in here, and update. As you can see, we have a scene transition play properly, and we're on the map. And because we have this navigable, we can just click to go back. And if we want to change the icon, or the image rather, displayed by scene transitions, we can do that very easily. For example, we have the Radiant Landscape 02. I happen to know these off the top of my head that there's another one on 03. And we can change the message. And now when we click on this, we have a new background and a new message. So you can customize those quickly and easily on the fly without having to know how Monk's Active Tile Triggers works or any of these other pieces. And just repeat that process for these basic pages.